Welcome back to P2. Today we're looking at solving equations using logarithms and this is unit 3.4. So you may have seen before, you may have come across them and that is equations where the unknown is a power. For example, I could have 5 to the power x equals 8 or something along those lines and more and more complicated ones and it's you know in the past you've had to work different things out these kind of ones in the past you would have probably seen them where the value on the right becomes something that you can create as a power where they have the same base so then you can solve it but what happens if that's not the case what happens if it's something like this and that's where solving equations using our logarithms is going to come in. Now, before we start, I just want to remind you of this fact that we did a couple of videos ago. And that is that we can convert between the log and a power form or indice form. And these things are interchangeable and they're going to become quite useful as we go forward. Now, let's have a little look at um, some examples where I'll explain everything and hopefully it'll make sense quite quickly. So here we have 3x or 3 to the power x I should say equals 18. I want to solve it for x. Obviously we can't turn this into 3 to the power something as if I'm going up in threes you know 3, 9, 27 I jump past this. There's no simple way of doing it can't take a square root, cube root, or anything like that. That is where my unknown is. Now, there's actually two ways of solving this. And I'm going to do both of them with you. So the first one is to use my conversion from log to power or power back to log. So this particular one means that I can convert this into an x equals log of 18 to the base 3. So starting off like this form, 3 to the power x equals 18, and I can turn it into this form, and then I just need to go to my calculator. So I need to use the button that looks like this. And from my calculator, I get that x equals 2.6311 to three decimal places. Now, there is an additional way in which I could do this. And I'm going to do this in green pen so you can see. If I start off with the original, what I can do is take logs of both sides. So that would be like this. Now, you'll notice that I'm purposely not writing a base. Because in actual effect, it doesn't matter what the base I use in this scenario, as long as it's the same on both sides. So I could use a natural log, the ln function. I could use logs to the base 10. And in older calculators, we would have always just used log to the base 10, as there was a button for that. In newer calculators, I might just use log to the base e, as there's a dedicated button for that. So if you do have an older calculator, this method might be a bit easier for you. Um, personally, I tend to use this method quite a bit just because when I grew up learning A-level maths, this is the method I had to use as we didn't have a, a calculator function like this one. We couldn't use any base. We had to do a change in base and stuff like that. So. It wasn't possible. Anyway, I digress. So what I need to do here is I need to move the x down here using my power rule. So this becomes x log 3 equals log 18. And then I divide by log 3, so I get log 18 over log 3. And then I just put it into my calculator. And of course, I get exactly the same answer. Try it. As long as you keep the bases the same, doesn't matter which one you use, 
I just then used ln log to the base e. But yeah, any log will work. So this is quite a nice method. Also useful if, you know, for whatever reason, you kind of forget about how to exactly change between these two for some reason. You know, you're under a bit of exam pressure. You can just take logs both sides quite quickly, a little bit of rearranging, and you get your answer. Okay, very similar question here. Eight to the power two X minus one equals 15. So same kind of process. This will give me, if I use the converting method, 2x minus 1 equals log of 15 to the base 8. And then I essentially want to rearrange that 2x is going to be 1 plus log of 15 to the base 8. Tend to write the 1 first so it doesn't look like it's part of the log. And then, of course, we need to divide by 2. So 1 plus log 15 to the base 8 divided by 2. And that will give me 1.15 correct to two decimal places. Now, I'm going to do it again in green, starting at the beginning. And I'm going to use the taking logs of both sides method. So same kind of thing, take logs of both sides. And again, it doesn't matter what base you use, as long as they're the same. Remove my power, so use my power rule, bring it down. So I get 2x minus 1 times log of 8 equals log of 15. And again, now it's just a matter of rearranging. So divide by my log of 8. And then it's a I want to add 1 and then divide by 2. So of course I'm just going to write this all out in full. Looking a little bit messy, but that's basically what I'm doing. I probably wouldn't write every single step down, I'd jump into the calculator a bit sooner. And of course we get exactly the same answer. You know, when I'm doing this, I'm just doing log 15 divided by log 8, press equals, add 1, press equals, divide by two, press equals. Just very quickly in a calculator makes it nice and easy. Now, you can see obviously I've taken a lot more steps there. Um, like I said, you know, when I get to this point, I pretty much write almost this kind of line, jump straight down, go straight to the calculator. But this way is obviously the most efficient way. Now, third example, is a little bit different and it's something that you've got to learn to recognize so to recognize this you really need to see what well, we've got a 2x here and then a single x so same base 2x single x i see this is going to be a quadratic another way it could be is this could be a 4x and a 2x or a 6x and a 3x Essentially, what you'll see is that one of your powers should be double the other one. If you spot that, it's going to be a quadratic. So you need to solve it like a quadratic. So just taking this down, this is the same as 3 to the power x squared plus 4 times 3 to the power x. I'm going to take the 5 to the side. So minus five equals zero. And you can see that the form of this is very much like y squared plus four y minus five equals zero. And you can solve it that way. So you could say, let y equals three to the power x. That will give me this equation. Then I solve it. So I get a y in both. We want a 1 and a 5. We want to add the 5, take away the 1. So we get y equals 1 and y equals negative 5 as our two initial answers. Then we rewrite in our value. So it's 3 to the power x equals 1. 3 to the power x equals negative 5. And from here, then, it should be quite straightforward. x must equal 0. 
3 to the power of 0 is 1. And then the second one then is impossible. The graph of this 3 to the power x or any of these positive exponential graphs, very similar to that one, you know, they're going to look like this or of this effect. There is no negative y values. Okay. That only exists if we transform the graph. So this one is not possible. Okay. And of course, if I do it, just looking at the black side, I can keep it in terms of 3 to the power x. And I would just have the same thing. And that's what I'm looking at. So we get 3 to the x equals 1, 3 to the power x equals negative 5, x equals 0. Oh, that one's not possible. Okay, now me personally, a lot of the time, I will just say let y equals whatever this is so that I can turn it. I usually use y as this is usually x. If these letters were y's then I would use x vice versa but I wouldn't use x over here if I've got something to the power x okay so yeah solve quadratically quadratic sometimes you might have to use a formula and then convert back in afterwards okay final example for you find the solution to this now you'll notice that here I've got different bases so if I've got different bases, the easiest way to solve this is to take logs of both sides. So I'm going to take logs of both sides. And as before, it doesn't matter what base you use as long as you use the same base. So depending on your calculator, if you've got the Casio FX991 like I do, the class with, then I tend to just use log to the base E, the LN button, just because it's a bit quicker. But like I said, any base, as long as they're the same. So I want to use our power rule to bring our powers down. So it's going to give me x log 2 equals x minus 1 log 3. Now what I want to do is do a little bit of rearranging. But before that, I probably should expand this bracket. Because what I want is I want to get the logs which have an x next to them on the same side. Now, for this one, again, it doesn't matter which way around I want to do it. But I'm actually going to rearrange it so that I can have a positive value of this. And I can have my x's on the right-hand side for that. Okay, but I'll get the same answer even if I did it the other way around. So I'm going to have x log 3 minus x log 2 on the right, and I'm going to have a positive log 3 on the left. I need to factorise out my x, and that's going to give me log 3 minus log 2 there, and a log 3 on the right. So x is going to be log 3 over log 3 minus log 2. And then I just need to go to my calculator to get my final answer. And we get 2.71 to three significant figures. Okay, so hopefully you followed that one okay. And as I was saying earlier, you know, I could have at kind of this point come down and took things on to the left with the x, so like log 2 minus x log 3 equals negative log 3. I could have factorised and then rearranged and then put into my calculator. And what you will notice, if you do this, you'll get exactly the same answer. Okay, so it does work either way, but as you hopefully can see, doing it the way on the right 
would just keep that positive value of that log three, just making it a little bit nicer. So I think it's now time for you to try a few. And as always, I'll put the answers at the end of the video. And don't forget to hit a like if you found this useful and subscribe if you haven't done so already.